Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of uh, Dissecting Loki. Uh, this is our <coughs> weekly review for the uh, Loki series season two. Uh, if you guys haven't seen season one, season one is uh, is up right now on my YouTube channel. Uh, we did that. I think that uh, we did that on two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Uh, but if you guys want to take a look at the season one, uh, it's on the YouTube channel where this is going to be a little bit more different, where this is on uh, my YouTube, uh, my on my Spotify channel, the audio, obviously you guys are listening to, but uh, if you guys want to see uh, how nice my new set is, uh, you guys can go to Plot Holes Pro, uh, youtube.com forward slash, uh, forward slash, uh, flash, <laughs> slash, Jesus Christ, uh, forward slash uh, plot holes pro, and then you guys can see my new set in there. It looks really nice too, as well. It does. I I, uh, I was uh, blown away. Yeah. So, I, and it's also I'm gonna go through. Um, I'm going through some changes on uh, some of my shows here too, as well. So, um, <clears throat> all of my video version of my show is gonna, it's just gonna be uh, exclusive on Spotify, and most of uh, the video versions on uh, on YouTube would be just. Um, it's just shorts and that's about it okay so cool. yeah so um spotify has been good to me and all that stuff and spotify does videos so not only that it's easier for editing and it's easier for uploading but a lot more tractions are on spotify anyway so i might as well um i'm gonna go um i'm not sponsored by spotify or anything i'm not joe rogan or anything but yeah, yeah it's it's yeah hopefully <laughs> joe joe rogan took like 11 years to be the joe rogan that we know now so wasn't he on the gonna... man show originally he was in the he was <laughs> i believe he was in the man show originally but but no he took off when uh when he did uh ufc commentating and all that but he was a stand-up comedian first right not a lot of people know that but he was a stand-up comedian first he was one of the first people to adapt through um through podcasting um in the middle of um ufc stuff like that um and then there was kevin smith too as well like back in yep. 2008 and all that so but yeah no he was one of the first ones to adapt to the um the podcasting stuff that's why um if you see like his earlier podcast stuff it's not this the way that it is now oh, it's it, you, just mean, you mean you mean it's like this <laughs> uh, yeah just like so just similar like this if you actually see my like um my earlier podcast it's um well i could t i could say it I, I i think i told the story before that um it started off in um it started off in in my bedroom no i and... haven't heard this story you haven't heard this story no okay. i haven't okay, but while so... we're here you might as well i might as well so before uh before we begin on the dissecting loki so i'm just gonna segue a little bit so the podcast uh started um I didn't have the well it started on the store right we did that in the store first but it was in and out since since there was like too much stuff going on in store i didn't pay attention too much in the podcast and then when i moved to california from miami that's when i started um paying attention more on the podcast and then what ended up happening was i didn't have like the room for it uh, i was living with my in-laws at the time so i did my podcast from my laptop uh and my and that laptop was on top of two pot uh, two uh pillows on top <laughs> of each other and it was like that and then i did my podcast mostly during the day because the lighting from the window would actually binds up the whole um uh, uh, the, uh the whole room right uh when i did my podcast and uh, at night you could see like how how it's nice and bright and all of a sudden it just starts getting darker and darker yeah. yeah it was and then the lighting is like uneven and everything yeah so i did that um my interview with tom mcfarland that was on that was on uh on my laptop with the pillow and all that stuff wow. so um yeah so it's a little bit more different the way it is now so now i have like two cameras and like lights and studio and all that stuff so this is it's a little bit more different now you so. gotta start somewhere though you gotta start somewhere you gotta start somewhere right so exactly man so you gotta start somewhere but anyways that's uh neither here or there so we are we are talking about loki today so yes, we are uh part three 
uh, of Loki. What is the title of that part three episode? Do you remember? I don't remember. I didn't. Did it actually show what it was during the episode? Yeah. Um, it's not like Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, because Star reason. Wars normally would be like Star Wars for some reason. They just leave off the title for the episode until like the very next day. No, Loki actually well, had the title on on the release day. I think Star Wars does that just so like because the title kind of gives away some stuff. So I think they did that on purpose just not to give you the title. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Shadow Warriors, how's that like giving away title? Like what episode five is called know. Shadow Warriors. Like, I don't, I don't know. Well, yeah, because Anakin's a shadow of himself, you know, whatever. I don't know. I, I you got to look into it from different angles. There's hints in it to me. Like I, I totally. I'll, think... I'll I'll take your word for it, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, I forgot what the title is this up uh, for part three, but um, yeah. So part three uh, essentially picks up from not really picks up directly after part two. It's more of like a continuation. Like I said before, part one and part two tends to be together. Uh, they're mashed in together. I think so the now. episode was titled 1893. 1893. Oh, I yeah, think right. that was That's the title right. of it. Mm-hmm. So uh, this time around, we get to see what's uh, happening with uh, uh, Renslayer. And for some reason, I'm just going to segue again a little bit in here. For some reason, people just don't remember or don't know that Renslayer is a variant of Kang. I don't understand this. I did not know that. I thought that was his love interest. No, man, it's it's literally in the comic books that she is the variant of Kang. Renslayer is a variant of Kang. Uh, it's just kind of weird because you know how like comic book reporters uh, tends to report on a lot of things as if you know their audience or or whoever is reading or following them on Instagram are like really uh, like eight year olds that don't know anything about comic books. So I'm sure I'm sure maybe one or two of them are. I mean, yeah, but like the way that they report it is just kind of very, very odd. Uh, they were reporting about like, uh, it was like, oh, spoilers ahead on on the on the Loki thing, and and they said that they may be going through the whole love story, kind of like the way that Loki on season one, Loki and and Sylvie so, had Sylvie had this love story kind of thing going on. Uh, even though they're like, you know, variants of each other. I mean, it makes sense, though. Loki is in love with himself. Yeah, which makes <laughs> sense, right? Now they're like, oh, do you uh, do you do you believe that? Uh, do you think that Renslayer is a variant of, of Kang and all that stuff? And then I was just thinking in my head, I was like, <laughs> she is a variant of Kang. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, do you think like. Who are you catering to? I, I don't know. It's just kind of very odd. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably looking at it from like a, a comic book perspective things uh, of things. Like you, I, I just assume that you should know this kind of like, kind of like the way Rebels. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, Ahsoka <laughs> was. Ahsoka. Yeah. Like you should just know this thing, but no, you have to watch Rebels first. It's the same thing as this. In order for you to know what's going on, Renslayer and Kang, you should just read the comic books right but you know people like do you really expect gen z to actually read <laughs> what's so, read i know <laughs> what's read um so anyways um yeah so apparently there's gonna be like a love story between them or something like that. i don't know what's going on but anyway so uh we picked up to like when where Renslayer is apparently miss time um uh miss minutes miss minutes i'm like miss time miss minutes like helping her out and all that stuff but really miss minutes not helping her out miss minutes helping out kang um apparently she's still helping out the kang that died which is kind of very odd because we're what does she really have to gain from that because the guy the dude's already dead she kind of like explained it when she kind of like tried to uh i guess seduce Victor Timely basically um, it seduce him because she wanted a body and he would he would never give her a body. Mm-hmm. So she want I think she is an AI who wants full control. And I think the only way she can have full control is if she mm-hmm. has a human form. So mm-hmm. maybe that's what Miss Minutes's arc is going to be in this. It has a very uh, 
it has a very th- this episode has a very Peter Pan um it did hook uh it has a very peter pan hook base into the story i don't know if you guys seen hook with robin williams and um jeffrey no i almost said jeffrey rush no <laughs> he he's pirates of the caribbean <laughs> um wow um, dustin hoffman dustin hoffman yeah yeah and um the one guy who died um yeah so played, uh, mario D- dustin hoffman uh robin williams and um <clears throat> uh what's her name Bang-a-rang. Pretty pretty woman. What's her name? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Uh, there, because uh, Julia Roberts Tinkerbell has a thing for Peter Pan and all that stuff. So it's almost like Tinkerbell is uh, Miss Minutes, and you know, and a Kang is like Peter Pan kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it just reminded me of that a little bit. But then again, <clears throat> I'm I'm pretty old, <laughs> so. Uh, there's a lot of things that I would see in movies. I'm just like, hey, that's kind of funny. That's kind of like a callback to this and this and that, right? Um, but yeah, so we get to see like what she's up to, what's going on. Apparently, they're trying to help Victor Timely, who is the uh, variant of Kang, um, get to the point where he becomes Kang the Conqueror. Does that make sense? Because that's well, what it makes from, it look like what they're doing. From what they were saying in the show, that this Kang ends up being the Kang that ends up becoming the same Kang we saw. Or the one, uh, the He Who Remains is what they were kind of trying to say, that that's who he is going to be. <clears throat> I, yeah, don't th- I don't think that's it, but I'll, I'll tell you closer towards the end. It, it's, just, it's very odd, uh, but... Um, I, I think this episode becomes a little bit more confusing to a lot of people because it, it, it does make it seem like that Victor Timely was uh, is the one who died, right? Um, well, that's what they're, or whatever that's what they're trying. He who remains. They're trying to make it so he's him, I think. But I think it's kind of... It could be true, but I also kind of think it's a could be a misdirect there's just two different ways this could go i i i, th- I, I think they they're deep they're <clears throat> i don't know how to say this they're playing around with the notion of time and they're playing around with too much of they're they're, they're like this disney is uh feige is doing too much for something that you can do too little uh that, that's something <laughs> that you can do like the most bare minimum and it'll be fine Right. It's just it's just way too much because if they just follow the comic books and go with the um, with the with the Reed Richards, not Reed Richards, um, uh, Richards. Nathaniel Richards storyline, it would have been it would have been fine. Like, I understand that's also somewhat confusing, but Kang has never been a if you've read the comic books, Kang storyline has never been the most basic storyline in marvel history it's almost it's always the most complicated uh of them all and he shows up everywhere as somebody else yeah he he shows up everywhere someone someone else like he's he's like the original fucking quantum leap right (laughs) there we go we need another one of them yeah so he's like another quantum leap so it's very confusing and the way they're presenting it's really confusing now too as well because now you you gotta have to think to yourself what's going on with the council of king right like what what was the purpose of the ending of ant-man i mean does that make sense i think i know but like i said we'll go through this episode and i'll tell you my thoughts so um but yeah so um essentially that's that's also what they're doing with with the whole episode itself and um and then what ended up happening was uh, the, the handbook, the TVA handbook. They gave it to the young Victor Timely when he was still a kid, um, which, again, begs the whole question, what came first, you know, the TVA or the handbook? You know what I mean? It's, Chicken or the egg. It, it's, uh, you know, they're playing around with the um, – this is something called, uh, for a lot of people who don't know, the, what um, what they did is – they're playing around with the uh, the time travel um, theory. Uh, it's it's called the chaos theory, right? Um, it's based out of string theory. Uh, essentially, <clears throat> the best way that I can describe this, I guess, I, th- I think we, we mentioned this on the last podcast. 
um, Family Guy did this when Stewie, actually the one who caused the Big Bang, but how can Stewie cause the Big Bang if he is in the world? But in order for the Big Bang to happen, Stewie has to exist within that world in order for the Big Bang to happen, right? It's the same thing as uh, what they're doing. In order for the TVA to exist, there has to be a handbook that was written that has to be given to Victor Timely so the TVA could be uh, become real, I guess, right? But but if you paid attention to the show, when he's mm-hmm. given the handbook, he's giving it mm-hmm. given it in the um, the main timeline. But then when they go to that other timeline in the future, it's a offshoot timeline. So is it really the same? can because that's the very a variant timeline again this has become this is when it becomes very confusing because for everybody who knows how actually time timeline works this is confusing as hell <laughs> uh for everybody who doesn't know how timeline ex- uh works it's also confusing as hell if you really think too hard about it and for everybody who's just going with the flow well congratulations you're the only one who fucking understand this show right now um but Here's the thing: the the most basic thing about time uh, time travel storyline. I I've learned this uh, for uh, since um, for the longest time. Uh, that's why I'm I'm able to enjoy a lot of time travel uh, shows and movies. Is that don't think too hard about it. That's it. Well, I just want to say for the record, my favorite time travel movie i want to know if you can guess it i'll give you one guess is it the one with ethan hawk no i don't even know what that's about oh that was like that one's a true time travel movie and it's so fucked up right. um it's called um oh crap actually, oh that's a good movie all crap actually go, go ahead tell, tell me what it is tell me what it is and why and then I, while i'm looking it up hot tub time machine because it's so funny I love that movie. I mean, uh, it, it even has Crispin Glover from Back to the Future in it, and it's got freaking what, William Zapka from freaking mm-hmm. Karate Kid. Mm-hmm. It's so cool! Great. Again, that, again with the uh, with the um, hot tub time machine. That was like the most basic uh, way of like yeah. understanding time um, time too, as well, right? So, and they even make fun of Back to the Future too. Did they really? Where? Yeah, they I, mention it. No, they mention Back to the Future. It, what do you mean? At like what point? Of it. I, I've watched that. I, I haven't, I I haven't that. seen it in forever, but at some point they were talking about time travel and they bring up Back to the Future. I was going to say, I'm like, I love that. Uh, I love that thing. Uh, actually, no, point. no, they don't bring up Back to the Future. They actually, um, I think William Zapka says that he calls him McFly or something like that. Was William Zapka in that? Yeah, movie? yeah. Karate, the Karate Kid, fucking William Zapka. Freaking, no, no, uh, no. Like in Hot Top Time Machine? Yeah. It was when... He was the one who had the girlfriend that um, uh-huh. he, he dared. Uh, I can't remember. It's been so long. But the one guy dares William Zaka if he can't do something or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. his wife would get down and, yeah, take care of him. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, huh. I didn't even know that. Um, okay, so I got the um, I got the movie. All right. It's what is called... It? Um, let me put it up on the bigger screen that I have in here. I mean, this is going to be a podcast on my section, so they can't really see me. They, they see you. So, um, I mean, they do see you on mine, but. <laughs> so the movie's called Predestination. That's it. No, I never heard of it. Oh, uh, one, uh, again, not the segue. Uh, one, do not read the Wikipedia for it. All right, I and- won't. Uh, and number two, watch it. And number three, if you feel like you need to watch it again, watch it again. <laughs> okay. Well, that's usually if there's a movie I like, I will watch it again. No, it's not that you. It's not that you're gonna like this movie. This movie is so fucked up that you gotta have to watch it again. It okay. required me like three watching. Not like I'm watching Christopher Nolan. <laughs> Like Interstellar and um, and Tenant, 
movie because I love it. I had to watch it three times because I'm just like, this is so fucked up. <laughs> like, this is the most messed up time. Like, if you were, if you were to think the most, no, no just, just watch it, man. It's, it's, What's it's it called again? What's it called again? Predestination. All right, I'm gonna put that in my phone right now so I watch it. Ethan, Ethan Hawk is in it. It's called Predestination. Um, this show is is treading close to predestination a little bit but okay um but yeah so just getting back to uh, what i was saying before i started coughing like crazy you guys didn't you guys didn't hear it but uh, if you saw if you guys watch it on the uh, plot host pros you'll see me coughing like crazy uh, my throat's still hurting um essentially do not think too hard about time travel movies because if you think too hard about time travel movies everything's just going to be lost like uh you're just gonna start questioning things you just have to go with the flow in order for you to enjoy the movie or you're just not gonna like the movie and that's not fun just turn your brain off so uh, yeah because like if you want to think about a movie and all that stuff you know um interstellar or something to think about and all that stuff right um a lot of people that think that they got interstellar no they haven't gotten interstellar um but yes uh you just have to just go with the flow with this and, and loki is the exact same way they are <clears throat> how should i say this they are taking different theories of time travel and weaving it no pun intended uh weaving it and creating their own uh theories and story uh, to, uh, own theories in order to fit the storyline i mean it's uh, like it's like spaghetti <laughs> just kidding it's more like it's more so like it's more so like when you're having an argument with somebody uh, a debate with somebody in order for them to win a debate or uh, um uh on their position in the debate what they would do is that they will present facts uh that makes no sense because what they did was they nitpick um different facts weave it to make it true to support their argument instead of actually just trying to find out real facts and let that manifest itself does that make sense um that's what loki is doing right now they're taking different theories different time travel theories whether it's string theory or whether it's uh um the projection theory and all that stuff and they're just making their own right I, i'm surprised that they haven't even um they haven't talked about what it would be like if you were to travel sixty five thousand light years away right uh have you heard about that the, the projection traveling thing time travel thing i mean if, if I you just were... know i just know that if you travel light years like an interstellar basically time the amount of time when you get from one place to another time is so much different and <laughs> so i know what you're getting at <laughs> yeah no so so essentially if you were if you were so the projection theory is that everything that's happening right now including this podcast has already happened right at some point in time it has already happened uh and the way that's explained is that if you were sixty five thousand light years away right and you have the most advanced telescope in the whole galaxy and you were looking through earth you will see dinosaurs roaming around that's basically what that projection theory is right because oh, see, everything I that it would be the opposite you'd see like the far future rather than the past no 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 you are sixty five thousand light years away from earth and then you have a uh you have the most advanced telescope that you could see earth right like inside earth yeah you would see dinosaurs roaming around right um that that's basically the whole projection theory that everything that's happening right now has already happened because everything is projected through light does that make yeah. sense the the uh the suns that we're seeing right now the stars that we're seeing right now those are actual suns that have burnt out thousands and millions of years ago well it depends on how far away we are well that's what i'm saying yeah. the light the light that it projected is just reaching us now but chances are those don't exist anymore right so it's listen nates 
I know uh, what you mean. That was astro, astro, astro astrophysics is like my uh, astrophysics and time travel is like my pastime reading. Even though I'm not an expert on it, I your, just your past well, time reading. Yeah, in my past time reading, which is <laughs> technically my present time reading. <laughs> <laughs> is it christmas are you gonna open a present no. oh my god but essentially that's what uh loki is diving into now me telling you guys this is essentially overthinking it now right <laughs> so in fact if you're if you're listening to this podcast you're listening to the past yeah if you listen to this podcast in the present this already have already taken place yes. so um <laughs> so essentially it's just overthinking it so again just don't overthink it just go with what the show is presenting you and you will be fine you'll be totally fine does it make sense fuck no it doesn't make sense but you will be fine that's at all. least they make it sound good they make it sound really good yeah they do no you're right they make it sound really good they make it sound as if they're not talking down to you. Does that make sense? Like yeah. they're not talking down to you when they're we're talking about this, because you know the way that they the way that they presented it. Like I said before, they left the book, the the TVA guidebook, to the younger uh, Victor Timely in hopes that he will be the king that just passed away. Right. Therefore, yeah. therefore everything will be woven to its beginning again. Yeah. Right. That that's like the most just go with that right whatever they're presenting you just go with that because now you're going to be thinking you're thinking to yourself if he never got the tva time book uh the guidebook then how would he know what to write in the guidebook you know and all that stuff it becomes a chicken and the egg thing so just just go with the flow what they have and you will be fine like you'll be totally fine um and this episode did the did did that magnificently um i like the balance that they have with some of the jokes uh on loki so far like it's not overly done it's it's rightfully placed does that make sense yeah. like like the beginning of episode two i think it is you see them trying to fix uh they're trying to fix something i forgot what were they trying to fix what were they trying to fix um and then they had just they have that back and forth oh, and then in the, in the past of when he's trying to make that stabilizer or whatever it was yeah whatever it was like yeah they were trying to fix and they had like a little back and forth there too and then the the whole thor and odin is like that's not even what oh, oh like. that was this episode yeah it was in this episode and right boulder. it's like boulder nobody knows about boulder it's like boulder i don't even know why they have boulder in there nobody knows about boulder so now people are looking up boulder right yeah <laughs> so um it's like why do they even have boulder there it's like oh thor's not that tall that kind that kind of stuff right so it's properly placed right i think that's what um the improvement so far what i've seen on uh marvel shows now given there hasn't been that much marvel shows that we've seen what what we've seen so far um uh captain america uh we saw and the winter soldier and then we saw uh secret secret invasion i guess uh and then there's something else i forgot what it was oh there's a lot of shows <laughs> yeah no well, like no in the past like year or so oh past I year forgot what it was well, the past year would just be secret invasion she hulk and Moon Knight. Okay, yeah. So, so besides She Hulk, uh, most of the jokes are basically just properly placed, yeah. somewhat, right? Uh, kind of like how Loki is. It's properly placed. It's not just like randomly placed uh, that in the past MCU did, which was the most complaint that a lot of people have. Well, now, because uh, before they were just like, ah, ha, 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 it's not bad. Huh? And then as time goes, just like everything else. As time goes, people will start nitpicking shits, right? Especially like, Todd McFarlane. Yeah, like as like if you see, if you see the amount of hate that Ahsoka is getting now, it's insane. Um, a lot of people are nitpicking Ahsoka right now. Uh, they're just talking about hating Christensen and all that stuff, and how Episode Five was like the, the only thing that's good and all that. So as time goes, people are going to start nitpicking it again. We're the only ones who actually see it now because. Uh, we're a bunch of 
of freakish fucking people that we just overanalyze things. We're a bunch of freaks. Things. We're a bunch of freaks. So we <laughs> kind of like we're ahead of everybody else. So, um, so yeah. So that's what the whole that essentially that's all the the whole episode was. That was it's just it was just them trying to get uh, Victor Timely before uh, Renslayer does. It was a giant um, Scooby Doo type of thing. It was that's a what giant. I was thinking. It was a giant Scooby Doo kind of thing. It's like they're trying to get to him before everybody else does, uh, before the one person does, before Renslayer does. Renslayer is trying to get to him before um, Loki and um, Morbius does that kind of stuff. And then in the middle, you kind of see the perspective of like Victor Timely. Um, what I didn't like about this episode, and I mean. I, I just made some criticism, but I haven't said anything that I don't like. The one thing that I don't like about this episode is Jonathan Majors acting on it. It's what do you mean? Just... Stuttering? His stuttering? That's the character he's portraying. This character really doesn't, to me, doesn't have a lot of self-confidence in himself, even though he kind of shows it. But you see that he's kind of a con man, too. I, I get it. Like, I, I, I get that. It's overdone. It's way overdone. To the point that it doesn't come across authentic and it's getting away in the story and understanding his speech pattern. Does that make sense? So uh, let me put it this way. There's a lot of things in the movies and TV shows that are exaggerated because it would never fly uh, the realism in the real world to the movies. Does that make sense? The only thing that I, the, the the only thing that I can compare it to is back in two thousand. Um, you know, it was a different time then. Back in two thousand, they had a little movie called X Men come out, and a lot of people kind of um, kind of criticized it because they're not using the proper costume, right? They were wearing like what all stealth black and all that stuff, right? Um, that was the original costume. And they asked Brian Singer about it. And it's like, why don't you just use the um the original X-Men uh suits? And he said that there are some colors in the real world looks nice, but if you translate it to the real world, it looks cheesy. Like Wolverine's suit and all that stuff, right? Now, again, this is back in 2000, right? If you were to translate, if you were to take uh, comic book accurate costume back then, no one's going to take it seriously because that's just the way um, the industry was. Nobody no, was taking... I, I agree with it. Like, yeah, no, no, I was upset when yeah, Wolverine no, didn't have the outfit, but that, it made yeah. sense. It's like, dude, it look yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Now, another example is Captain America in Avengers, uh, event, the first Avengers, right? Yeah. His His proper suit did not translate well to the movies. Right, everybody. I mean, I thought I thought it looked all right. I mean, but yeah, it kind of looked a little tacky. Best yeah. way I can say it, it looked tacky. Yeah, it just doesn't translate. It just doesn't translate well. It's the exact same thing for Loki. You know, the stuttering that Jonathan Majors was doing may work in the real world, and that's how actual people do have stuttered. Like freaking. Again, I'm gonna use this example. Do not say anything about the. Do not comment about this, Nate. This is just an example, okay? Because I have a no religion, no politic rule on my podcast, okay? Same here. Do, do not make a comment about this. I'm just using it as an example, okay? And everybody else, shut up, okay? <laughs> it's like the same thing as Joe Biden stuttering, okay? Uh, Joe Biden stutter when he talks, right? Because he has a stutter. But if you were to take that stuttering and put it in the movies, it's not going to translate well, right? Uh, it's not translating well now, but it's not going to translate well. So the stuttering that Jonathan Majors is doing may be very realistic, but to put it into movies, it's it's not appealing, right? It's not appealing. It's it takes away from the story. It's I, I could barely understand what he's trying to say. I could barely understand the the whole story itself just because of the stuttering. So I didn't like his acting at all. That stuttering just 
it it just wasn't it just isn't it shouldn't exist at all it just shouldn't exist at all and plus it doesn't it also doesn't make sense because again don't think too hard about it uh time travel if you're trying to make him the uh uh the guy who died the king that died the king that died didn't have a stutter and how old was that king who died he had plenty of years to fix his speech <clears throat> maybe he went to speech class <laughs> he went to speech who taught him okay he had see, plenty of time again time is on his side or what again thinking too <laughs> again thinking too hard on it just don't I'm think too think, hard on I'm it i'm not man. thinking hard i'm no, just but, telling you the no, because are endless yeah, because now the question comes in. See, see, this is why thinking hard. Now the question comes in: who, who helped him with his speech pattern? Himself. See, see, there you go. So now we're <laughs> going into this loop now, right? So, uh, his acting just didn't do anything for me. I, I, I didn't like it. It didn't mesh well with uh, Renslayer. It didn't mesh well with anybody in in the room that's along with him. Even fucking Miss Minute. <laughs> In this minute, man, and there's a fucking animation. It didn't match well with Tara Strong. So um, that's just me. But uh, what about you, man? What's uh, what's what's um, your take and what's uh, what's your take on this uh, part three? Uh, I really liked the episode. Like I said, I thought it was kind of like a Scooby Doo chase type episode. Everybody get Kang, you know. That was mm -hmm. I thought it was fun. Um, that it, it was kind of cool to see Sylvie again. I didn't think we we're gonna see her again that fast. Um, I thought it was nice to see, you know, Renslayer and Miss Minutes. I thought it was cool that Miss Minutes made herself into a ghost to scare people. Very, the artwork was very like old Dis Disney, like classic, you know, Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie looking. Oh, when you turn when she turned black and white. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, Mm -hmm. What did I not like? So, well, I mean, like, there's a lot of things not to like about it. I didn't mind the stuttering, so I'm gonna just, I don't know. I, I'm, I think I'm just more understanding than most people are. Like, I just kind of like be like, I see what the person's idea was. So, whatever. Um, I, I would, I would challenge you to watch it again, and I probably will watch it again and, at some point. Yeah, so I, I challenge you to watch it again, and then just try to follow what he's saying like even though you already know what he's about to say just follow like the pattern of like you know what he's trying to say it's just like get on with it man it's like it's like to 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 today junior i also i also did like um how he had that little secret trap door in that place just to get out that was pretty smart how he had that that didn't make any sense uh, it made perfect sense he needed they made it known through the thing he's pretty much kind of a con man so oh i guess i guess what you, i see what you're saying yeah i guess so yeah so I, he, he needs a getaway kind of thing okay. yeah which okay. also which also could be foreshadowing of his future that he's just gonna make trap doors everywhere what i don't understand what you're trying to well, say appara apparently if you think about it um all the Ripples in the time streams are technically trap doors. But oh. anyway, that's thinking too hard. Out. Yes. No, that's not thinking hard at all. You make a thing make me seem well, like I think hard. I don't think well, well, okay, okay, anything. okay. Well, okay, fine, what fine. I'm gonna do for breakfast. Okay, fine. Let's let's segue a little bit then. What do you mean about the time stream being trap doors? I mean, like how Sylvie used it. She would Okay, she's supposed to be in this time, but then, bam, she disappears, and she's nowhere to be found. Why? Because she, quote-unquote, used that little trap door and went into a timeline that nobody could find her, which obviously was a timeline that was going to be destroyed. So, A little bit of a reach, isn't it? I didn't reach far. <laughs> that, that, that is one hell of a reach there, man. <laughs> I got long arms. What can I say? I got long arms. Am I, am I, am I Reed Richards? What am I? What's going on here? Like, <laughs> but what uh, a reach there on that explanation. <laughs> but I keep really, going. Like as far as like things I didn't like about the episode, I didn't like that it was wasn't longer. I, I'm just really enjoying the show. I really am. Well, um, we said well, we said it already on the um, on episode two. For some reason, 
Disney's giving us shows that we don't need uh, to be longer, and they're making it longer. Andor, and the shows that we do need and to be longer, uh, the, the 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 shows that we do need longer, they're making it shorter, like Loki, which makes no sense. Um, but yes, no, I agree with you. the The episode should have been longer. Should definitely been longer. Well, but... the thing is with this show. If I'm correct, I think this show is supposed to lead into Deadpool. And then Deadpool is supposed to lead directly into Secret Wars, from what I was well, reading. Well, that's going to be a problem. Since yeah, Deadpool's I know. Been, since Deadpool's been announced, that's going to be removed from the 2024 release. Well, no, just from May. So it co- could come out like six months later or four months later. Who knows? Two months later. Still, they were in the middle of the production uh pre uh sorry filming when the strike went up so that's that's I mean, kind who of knows, an, who knows how indication. much more who who knows how much more they have left the film though that's the thing maybe they got most of the way done maybe they got halfway done maybe they got a quarter done we don't know we're not, well, we're not working on it well what i can tell you is that they were going through they were going by the script and there was no improvisation from Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, so, because of the writer because, strike. Because of the sh- writer strike. And then they had to go right into the actor strike. So meaning there is a good chunk of that movie that's not done. And majority of it is the script. Because now he's just going by the script because they needed to get it done. Well, no, the that, script is done. No, no, no. no what I'm saying. No, what I'm saying is that. For someone like Ryan Reynolds and for a character like Deadpool who ad libs all the time, they filmed everything through the book and there was no ad libs and there's no jokes. So that means that they have to go back and put some ad libs in there. So the movie is not done. It's far from it because now they have to put some ad libs. They have to put some jokes in. They have to put some improvisation in there. Uh, So there's a lot of Oh, man, I forgot what it's called when you put your voice uh, later. ADR, I think that is. I forgot what it's called. I shouldn't know this, but um, I forgot what it's called. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of that that's not in voice the movie. Over. <laughs> that, so, so there's going to be a lot of, yeah, you can just call it voiceover. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of that that needs to be put in, you know, after the fact. So. Mm-hmm. The movie is not done. I'm pretty sure that the movie is going to be pushed back for like 2025. I'm pretty sure of it. I hope not. I need me some Deadpool. I need me some DP. It's not. It's not going to happen. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I I should be optimistic about it, but reality You're of not. it, <laughs> reality of it, they're still on strike right now. That's yep. the thing. And the thing is, I think now. As far as video games go, I think a lot of them are going to start going on strike too. So it's just a trickle down effect. Well, that that's a whole different story. But my 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 viewpoint in there is that it's because the studio made a deal with the writers. So essentially, that deal from the writers somehow got leaked to the actors, and they said they got that. We want now, that exactly. So now, it's funny because the actors make the most. <laughs> yeah, so now, so now that's gonna that's gonna be doing a ripple effect, and for uh, and you know I know we segue a little bit in here. I know we're talking about Loki, but just one last thing, um, for everybody complaining and bitching about their Netflix and their and their subscription being Plus. being so much more now, um, this if you supported the uh, the strike and all that stuff. I mean, this is just the after effects of it. Okay. It's that's just the way it works, right? In order for somebody to get promoted, meaning more money, they have to have to get that somewhere, right? They have to get that money somewhere. Uh, it's, it's just the same way as, you know, if you are able to save money, you can take that savings and pass it on to people, you know they need to pass on the the charges somewhere right so they're gonna have to do it through uh customers so you know the way i look at things is that this is just the way it works man you know 
it, 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 there is a cost in there. It, um, it was a good cost if you supported the actor, the actor strike and the writer strike. There is a good cost in there. They should be getting paid more, but you should not be complaining that your subscription is way too much. Hey Tim, my subscription, it's way too much. That's just that's just that's just, that's just me. So that's just me. So I, I don't complain about my subscription but being way too much because people always say, like, oh, you know, it's almost the same price as cable. Yeah, but then again, I have to fucking uh go through a lot of um you know commercials about lawyers trying to help you out in your injury uh when you get into car crashes and how uh, there's a lot of infomercials. I don't have to deal with that. Right? Or or some sort of medicine that has a whole bunch of side effects. Exactly. So if you think about it, yeah, they're the both the same price right now, but which one theoretically are you paying more? Are you paying more on the, your subscription services or are you paying more uh, <laughs> physically and mentally? on? Remember, on remember people, time is money. If you're there wasting your time watching commercials, there goes your money. I'm just saying, right? So, um, what's your final thought on this uh, on this episode? All right, I really like this episode. My theory as to where they're trying to go with this is, I could be wrong, but I think the he who remains kind of saw probably at some point that he was just going to be mm-hmm. stuck in this loop forever, being the Kang that kind of holds back the other Kangs for eternity. And not really being in full control. Mm -hmm. So I think what he did. Is simply. Found a way out. Mm -hmm. And that way out was. He kills himself there at the end of time. But he sets it up to where. Where we're going now. With this Kang. Who is Mm -hmm. supposedly going to be him. Mm -hmm. He he dies. Mm -hmm. Um, All the other Kangs are free. Mm -hmm. And. These are the ones he was trying to hold back. Mm -hmm. he's dead so he doesn't have to worry about it anymore so now these Kangs are now a problem for everybody except for him because he's dead but not really so my theory is what I'm trying to get at he killed himself so that the Avengers can somehow kill all these other Kangs and then this Kang is the last Kang standing and he can really be free to do whatever he wants that's my guess. Yeah, there's a lot more other threats in the MCU that they could have just used besides the Kang thing. And you wouldn't have to go through that whole gymnastic of explanation. Yeah, but that's, you know, they have to keep things moving on because this the Kang that knew everything is dead. So this Kang now doesn't know everything, but it's supposed to become that Kang that becomes every, that knows everything. But I have a feeling along the way he will not be that same Kang because essentially he's not going to be stuck with the same problem that Kang was. So we're going to see over time him kind of, instead of going the same way as he who remains, he goes a little bit to the left or the right. So he might just be like another Loki, kind of good but bad as time goes on. Jason Aaron's War of the Realms would be better. <laughs> well, would this, been is, better. this is this is what we're getting. This is my theory. Yeah. I could be wrong. I probably like, am wrong, but this is, this the, is my the more, theory. It's like I am so afraid and so scared that this is becoming another Soka, Ahsoka. It's the further down the rabbit hole that you get to these episodes, the more clusterfuck that this is becoming. Well, I'm not saying that this is going to happen in the Loki show. I'm saying the setup is here in the Loki show. The reality, the end of it to getting to that point is probably Secret Wars. Is where we might see that all happen. It's too much of a clusterfuck right now. Like the more the more that uh the more that you're explaining it, the more that I'm thinking that's gonna be a big clusterfuck because it shouldn't be this complicated in this this much explanation to review a show that should be very basic. Do you know what I mean? That wasn't a lot of explanation. How was 
That was just a theory. You're, you're see now you're overthinking it because I gave you my theory. No, it's, it's, <laughs> no, that, that's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is that you shouldn't have to have a theory on what's going to actually happen. It should be very straightforward on what they're trying to achieve at this show and what they're trying to achieve in the episode, right? Like for example, and I know I keep going back to Rogue One. Rogue One is straightforward because we already know the end and the beginning or the, the end of it. Yeah, we already know the end of it, right? We're just seeing the beginning, but it's very straightforward. They're trying to get the plans for the Death Star. That's it. There shouldn't be some mental gymnastics of how we can explain where this show would be heading or what they're trying to explain in the episode itself. It, it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be complicated. If we're going to explain time travel is complicated. You said it yourself. No, no, I know that's what I'm saying, but they're, what, what they're doing is that they're trying to explain it in the most basic way, but it's more, the more that they explain it in the most basic way, it's complicating it even more. And like I said before earlier, if you know how time travel somewhat works, it's going to be complicated. If you don't know, it's also going to be complicated. But if you have no idea what's going on, you're the only one who knows what's going on. And you're the only one who understands the show. And we're at that position right now where it's so convoluted. It's just, it's just so, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be this much explanation and complicated and back and forth on how how this show works and what they're trying to explain it's just it's just very it's just very odd do you know what i mean it's like well, why can't we just say that you know that that they're trying to revive you know the old king i mean essentially they did no because that's not what they're doing now all these things started to like take I mean, fold during the episode. They did say something about that because you know what complicated it even more, right? When they got to his, um, to his lab and miss minutes, like, is that it? He's like, yes, my whole work and my whole, uh, my whole life accum uh, is, is accumulating to this. And it's this little figurine of a little round thing, which clearly looks like the pod that he was uh, transported in the quantum, the quantum realm. Right. That was the pod. That was his pod. That was K Kang's pod. That was his time traveling pod. And that complicated things because are you that Kang or are you the other Kang that died? Like, do you see what I'm saying? It's just well, I mean, it's, it's just it's just very. It you're you're sending us what they're doing is sending us mixed signals. You're it's saying a, that it's you're saying to that, be like that. No, it's you're saying travel. no, no. But you're saying that you're you're saying that you're this king. But then you're saying no, I'm actually this king. It's like no, but you're this king. Then why do you have that? Well, that's the king. That it's just. It's just a lot of mixed signals. Like you think that you're going so it's not it's not like a meme where it's like don't let them don't let them uh, know what your next move is kind of thing. No, this is just very complicated. You know what I mean? It's just complicating things. I'm just hoping that it doesn't turn out to be an Ahsoka thing again because this show only has six episodes. Yes. And we're already halfway there, Nate. And it's so good. This is I don't know. I love this. I love this stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's the thing is, you said it yourself. Just turn your brain off. You, Tim, you are thinking hard now. Stop. No, I'm telling you to stop. Turn your brain. I'm off. not. No, I'm not thinking hard about it or anything. I'm going with the flow, and their flow is confusing. It's not confusing. How, how about you, this? How about this? Time travel. This. No, no. How about simple, this? You, this Kang is not going to be the exact same Kang no, because let me, that exact Kang is dead. Okay, okay, let me ask you this. Do you understand Tenant? The movie Tenant. Oh, the movie Tenant. Um, I mean, I want to say I think I do, but I only watched it once, and apparently everybody says you need to watch it like five times. That is the most straightforward movie ever because they never let up. The full explanation is there. 
uh, it's complicated if you overthink it. There is no overthinking required. There's one side that goes backwards and one side goes forwards. They were able to tap in to that whole forwards and backwards, that temporal loop in there that they were able to tap into, right? It's not that complicated, right? Why are you wearing a gas mask? Well, because if you go backwards, you actually breathe forwards. Now you're actually taking the air out. Like, fucking, it's not complicated, right? This in the like it didn't do too much to complicate things. It it requires um many uh many watches. Yes, I understand that. But it's the it's to understand it because it's not complicated, it's just that you don't get it. Does that make sense? You needed to watch the movie again because you don't understand it. It's not because it's complicated. This show, you have to watch it again because it's complicated and you don't understand it. I mean, I pretty much get it. I don't need to watch it again. I want to watch it again because I enjoyed it. There's a difference. Yeah. It's just, it, it, I, I think that they need to strain out some storylines and they need to just flatten out a lot of things in here and just give us one quick answer. Is this the king that died or is this the king that was in the quantum realm? Which is this? I think it's supposed to be the Kang who died, but he's going to turn out to be his own person. That's that's the thing. Like, There's only one you, and then they... This is the TVA, Time Variance Authority. That Kang is dead. They're trying to remake that same Kang, but he will not be that same Kang. Um, it, th- th- that's, that's just my final thought on it. I just, they just make it too complicated. But I, I will say this, though. I will say this. I will promote one show that is a DC comic show. Not a lot of people know. And it's the the most underrated show as of right now. The most underrated show that nobody's watching. And it's the best show on any streaming service. And no one's watching it. And I'm fucking hooked on it. Right? Tell you what, I'm not watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Bodies. Never heard of it. It's a comic book back in 2014 uh, done by C. Spencer. And it's the most amazing thing that I've discovered that I've never knew about. I'll, I'll give you a quick premise on it. All right. Give it to me. Okay. I'll give you a quick premise on it. And it's and this is it's not complicated, right? It's just it's just that you just you just I just don't understand it. That's why you have to keep watching it. That's why it's intriguing. So, in 2023, right? Right now. In 2023, there is a murder that happened, right? Um, and it took place in London, Long Heights. The, the street's name is Long Heights. Okay. Right? There's a murder that happened. Uh, police officers saw a dead body, naked uh, guy, uh, on his side, missing his left eye, has a bullet wound, uh, on on his top left temple, right, and obviously he's dead and he's naked, uh, and he's he and he's um and he's on his side on his left side, uh, naked, dead, right. Again, bullet wound, no eye, dead. Okay, no blood anywhere. So, what ended up happening was they did an autopsy, and it turns out that the bullet is not on the brain. Which is weird because there's a there's there's an entry wound, right? What makes it more complicated is that there's no exit wound. The brain is completely intact. There is no bullet in the brain, right? And he's missing an eye, and he has no uh, fingerprints to match. Like this person does not exist at all, right? Okay. I'll, okay. Uh, but before the officer discovered that murder, there was a big power surge that happened and it knocked out all street lights. Right? It knocked out all street lights and and then discovered you got, the murder. You got me thinking about Terminator when they t- transform right? back in time, electricity, and they're naked. Yeah, and they're naked, but instead of alive, they're dead, right? Yeah. So that's what happens. Now, here's the thing 20 years. Uh, about two decades later, uh, two decades later, uh, later, 
Now at so 2023, this one we go back in time in 1941. Okay. In 1941, the exact same thing happened. Power surge, guy lying on his back. Uh, I'm sorry, lying on his side, bullet wound, uh, eye missing, right? No, no exit wound, no bullet. Discovered in the exact same spot, street. 1941. And then we go back further in time in 1823. Exact same thing. Exact same street, exact same power surge, uh, exact same bullet wound, exact same eye missing. Is it the same guy? Here. Now, that's a good question. Is it the same guy? Yes. You know how, how you can tell? Because <laughs> he's got the bullet wound, the eye missing, and it's the yes. same guy. Because <laughs> he has a tattoo on his wrist. There's a three. There's a Roman numeral sign of number three on this tattoo each and every single one of them exact same thing right now the first thing that you might be thinking to yourself well it's just a, cat, a copycat killer right copycat killer that's that's nice this is how the show ended we travel back to the future <laughs> right? we travel back to the future right in 2000 and 53. Okay. Exact same thing happened to the exact same person. Hold on. Here's what makes it interesting. I'm holding on. The person's alive. So it shows how it happens. The end. <laughs> it's called Bodies. It's on Netflix right now. And I'm on episode three. And this is... The single most amazing comic book based movie that I have ever seen in my whole life. I wish I I would have read it in 2014 when it was first came I came out. It's fucking amazing. If if it's not through and through the exact same thing as the comic book, ah man, I wanna I'm trying to find C Spencer right now and I want to interview him. And this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And see, not complicated at all. Pretty straightforward. Not complicated. Not no. complicated. No, no, not at all. No, not. There's not no. At all. There's there's None. no complication in there. I everything that I told you is pretty basic and it's pretty straightforward. Each murder happens two decades apart, and then one that happens in the future, but the person is alive, and that's that's it. That's all you have to know. Did you have any theories about? Miss Miss Minutes trying to put, trying to well, get someone alive they're... again. It's alive just, again. I'm Come just saying. On, I, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> she does have an accent though, so I'm just saying. It just needs to. Uh, they just need to strain out the 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 story in the next three more episodes because, dear God, if episode four, in episode in episode four does not get strained out. Again, keep in mind, the second last episode and the last episode are connected. So if episode four is not straight now before those two episodes, we're fucked. We're not fucked, man. This is a thing about time, all right? We're fucked. It doesn't matter anyway because they're all connected. It's all connected. The MCU is connected, all right? It's time, time is, that way. See, see, that's the thing, man. Time is linear. <laughs> not in the TVA, it ain't. Apparently not, man. <laughs> Fucking apparently not, man. So, um, that's 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 my prediction on it. I don't have any, I don't have any prediction of what's going to be happening in the next few episodes. I just I'm trying to go with the flow right now and just go with what they presented me. And although confusing and makes no sense. I'm going to go with it and just take it as it is, as face value, that they're trying to revive the old Kang. Uh, and Miss Minutes about to tell uh, Renslayer the whole story about this Kang, apparently, because we didn't get that whole story in, uh, on uh, season one <laughs> or, or, in, or in Quantum Mania. So, um, but hey, the way I look at it, Nate, they're canceling off 
and rewriting some Marvel movies and shows for a reason. Yep. So because of this very situation. I don't think it's this situation. I just think they weren't really bringing out quality uh, content for a while. So they never they got, they, they got lazy. They got very well, the, lazy. The first, phase, really... the first phase of the MCU was pretty good. See, see I, I, this is my argument on the first phase of the MCU. It was directed towards kids. Well, That's wait, why. Let, me, let me let me rephrase that. I said first phase because there's three phases. The first, I guess you could say Infinity Saga arc was pretty good. I give it like 90%. It was first three, the first three phases. No, here's the thing. People are re-watching phase one to three right now, and they're going, this is pretty shitty. Who it's, are they? Tell me who they are. The people who were watching it at age seven and the people that are now age 20, 21, 22, you know, I mean, I rewatch the, it and I love the, every the, minute of the it pe- except for the people who were watching it at age 25 who are now age 35. Yeah, we're talking about kids. They don't matter. You know, those people. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everybody the matters. Phase, phase one to three was directly towards kids. That's why it was. I don't think so. That's why it was it was amazing. You cannot see the faults in them because we were watching them as ha ha, it's so funny, blah blah blah. Now that we're older, re-watching them, now you get to see they're like, those jokes makes no sense. Todd McFarlane made perfect sense when we interviewed him. He doesn't like the MCU because when you're in it's a not st- realistic to him. What, what no, he said when you're in a stressful situation. It's a fucking big deal, and you should take it seriously, not cracking some jokes. Now, people are echoing what he actually told us, like, a few years ago. They're saying the exact same thing now because we're now older. We now understand how we should be watching and what kind of movies that we like and what kind of movies are actually takes to to be considered as good movies and re-watching phase one to three, it sucks. Now it's rippling down to phase four where people are just like, well, this is garbage. But if you really look at it, Nate, phase four followed the exact same rule as phase one to three. The only difference is, is the audience grew older and now we can see how it actually is. And now we're saying it's shit. I disagree. If you're, either way, I kind of disagree with Todd McFarlane too because if you're going to see a comic book movie, um, you're going to see a comic book movie. If you're going to go see a more realistic type of movie, you're going to go see like a Martin Scorsese movie or sometimes Christopher Nolan movie. It's, you know, it's just a lot of the old school director type movies that were more grounded in their work. This no, is more it, fantasy. This is not supposed to be taken seriously. But if you look at the comic books, even the comic books are not like that, Nate. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. There is not in the middle of a battle scene has anyone cracked jokes. I I challenge you to find one pre, pre-MCU pre that they do the exact same thing. Pre-MCU. Because what ended up happening with MCU is because it started. Spider-Man to- all the time. It's it started to affect the comic books, right? It started to affect the comic books. Pre MCU, tell me anything that cracks jokes. Spider Man does not crack jokes. No, Deadpool. no. What he does is that he's obnoxious and he says a lot of um, how should I say this? Quirks. Says a lot of yeah, the, to... but not but not jokes, but not jokes. Okay. You will not be able to see that pre MC uh, pre MCU. So yeah. that that that's the thing. It's just it's just the same way as we're finding out that we used to like we used to like heroes when we were kids. Now we understand more of the villains. The same way that happened with wrestling. Wrestling we used to love all the superheroes, and then the Attitude Era with the WWE in nineties happened, and we like that even more. It's just that's how people progress as they grow older. Right, the MCU phase one to three was directed to the kids, directly to the younger generation. We loved it, we ate it up. It never changes, 
until uh, phase four. Uh, phase four is the exact same way as phase, phase one, two, three. The only thing that changed is that we're fucking older now and we know what good movie is. And by watching this, we see the gaps. We see what's happening, right? That's, that's the exact same reason why people now, right? Now, not, 20, uh, not 2011, not 2012, but now, they are praising Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League initiative. There's a lot of people who's like really liking the Justice League initiative now. They're looking at Justice League and they're looking at the Batman and the Superman. They're like, this is not that bad. Now people are like saying, oh, Ben Affleck is actually a pretty damn good Batman. We should have more of this. Well, it's fucking too late now. I uh, disagree with the Ben Affleck thing, but... You can disagree all you want. <laughs> that's completely fine, right? Anybody else can disagree all they want. But what I'm saying is that this is the flow of what's happening now. Ben Affleck is being praised right now as the best Batman uh, incarnation there is. Okay, Michael Keaton. That that's what everybody. Michael Keaton, not Michael Keaton. Michael Christian Keaton's Bale. More, Michael Keaton's more nostalgia, and that's it. Yes, and Christian Bale is also good, but the best iteration of Batman is Ben Affleck. Because no. of how he was presented by Zack Snyder. Again, filmmaking, just depending on filmmaking, right? Again, the Christopher Nolan uh, uh, saga is all about myth, myth, uh, mythologistic kind of Batman, where this one is more grounded. Again, the audience change. Nothing has changed in the movie format. The audience change. That's it. And the MCU failed to adapt to the aging audience. Because they're still trying to cater to the younger kids, but the younger kids are not watching these now because, well, they're Gen Z and they have no fucking money. We're still watching this. They fail to actually just adapt to the aging population that pays to watch these guys, that pays for the subscription, that pays for uh, the movies, and that pays for everything. That's why, that's why, that's why phase four is failing. And now they have to rewrite everything. And they, when they rewrite everything, when they re rewrite everything, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be towards our age group. They said they canceled Daredevil because you don't even see Daredevil until, like, what, episode four? Isn't that what they said? Like, they, what got, they got uh, up four episodes done, and then he didn't like it. Yeah, so because you, you don't because you don't even see Matt Murdock turn into Daredevil until episode four, which is, like, almost like at the end of uh of the series or something like that well, it was, was going to be 18 episodes oh, okay so, okay so 18 episodes you don't even see him in, uh, as daredevil until episode four until later right if you look at the formats of uh of mcu it's always been like that you speaking of speaking of wanting more and not getting it 18 episodes of daredevil are you going to argue that <laughs> no 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 i'm not arguing that i'm not arguing that well I should actually argue that. Why? Why is it eighteen episodes, man? What the just give them a freaking movie at that point. I know. It's like, are you, just show, are you just showing us like five minute episodes? That's why it's eighteen. It's gonna it's be like, what? What was that one streaming service that didn't last that long? Where they're like five minute, uh, ten minute episodes or whatever. Quibi or something. Yeah. Hey, Quibi. It's like we're gonna give you five minute episodes. Go. <laughs> it's just Quibi all over again. So yeah. So again, like that's just. That that's just the, that's just the fact of the matter. It's a, I I I just feel mm -hmm. I I disagree with you because I feel like there was a lot of mature stuff in the first three phases of MCU. You got Winter Soldier and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel for me, I just feel that the writing wasn't that good. I felt like they just got to Disney got to where we can do anything now and people will just buy it. And then people mm -hmm. were just like, no, you can't do anything and we won't just buy it. Here's proof. We don't like it. Well, here's the thing, Nate, you just got older because that's the exact same thing that they, that's the exact same mentality they had when they presented you guardians of the galaxy. We and can do whatever Guard we want. Guardians of the galaxy three is just the same as two and one in my opinion so actually actually if you look at the guardians of the galaxy number three the what made Ga guardians of the galaxy number three amazing is because he was able to adapt to the aging group and made it more mature emotionally there is nothing emotional emotional part holding on to you in guardians of the galaxy one and two except the ending part and that's it 
right? Which is um, Peter Peter Quill's mother dying. That's the emotion part, and uh, Yondu dying. And that's about it. Guardians of the Galaxy three from point one to point uh, from the first point to the very end. It's all emotional points because that's the age group that James Gunn was targeting. And that's what makes James Gunn a lot better, more directed than everybody else, because he can actually pinpoint who his target market is. And that, that's what I'm saying, Nate. You never like the movies have never changed. You have changed. You have changed. Like literally you did. You you had a different perspective of things like like, for example, She-Hulk. People fucking hated She-Hulk. Why would you hate She-Hulk when the writing style of She-Hulk is the exact same thing as if, as phase two of, no, phase three of Marvel? There's a bunch of fucking jokes out of nowhere. Funny thing is, I actually like She-Hulk. See? It's like, there's, like people hated it for some reason, but it's, it follows the exact same formula. People didn't. My my thing about She Hulk was people weren't getting it. It was making fun of the MCU itself. Yeah. But people took it too seriously, and I'm just like, oh my god, you guys well, are well, like totally blown well, this out of the way. Out of well, proportion. that's well, that's the thing. If if She Hulk was a movie instead of the Disney Plus series, it would have done very well. The reason why is because the Disney Plus series. Our age group take Disney Plus series as as a serious drama like streaming service. Does that make sense? If you're gonna put something in there, it has to have to be captivating and has some dramatic effect in there. You want some jokes? Put it in the fucking movie. Do you, do you know what I mean? Uh, for example, if you were to take um, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, number one. If you were to take that and put it in a Disney Plus series, it would never. I work. know it would not work at all. It would not work. <laughs> it would not work. It worked in the movies because it has short quips, funny, all that. Move on, right? Where Disney Plus has to be dramatic and has to drag longer. That that's just the perspective of it, right? She Hulk didn't do well. It's not because there's a female lead on it. That makes no fucking sense. All right, it doesn't matter if it has a female lead or or a male lead on it, right? It just wasn't in the movies. It was in the platform where we perceived it as something more dramatic and something more meaningful. That that's what we're looking for on a this on a streaming service. That's it. We're not looking for funny, right? And it never it never really led up on the format of the MCU. It's the exact same fucking format. We just got older. That's all it is. That's what people fail to realize. They always I say, just, I still disagree with you. <laughs> no, just no, just go ahead. If you have time, go watch the MCU phase one to three. If you have time, right? Because it's fucking a lot. If you have time, go watch it, right? The most mature and more celebrated, and this is your first hint, the most mature and celebrated part of phase one to three of the MCU was the Winter Soldier. At the time of that release, people didn't understand it, right? When I mean people, I mean the people who were actually watching it were, were kids. We were teens when we were watching Winter Soldier. I mean, was I a, wasn't a teen. It was, <laughs> it was like it was a serious political uh, type of of movie, and we didn't get it because it wasn't funny, haha, right? But now, now we're adults. We're looking at this. We're just like. Fucking Winter Soldier is underrated. Like, no, it wasn't underrated. It was a really good fucking movie. We're just older now, so we understand it more. It still right? had jokes in it, by the way. Oh, no, no, that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the most mature out of phase one to three. It's the most mature one of all of them. Civil War was the most, uh, uh, Winter Soldier was the most mature one. Civil War wasn't even that mature because there's a bunch of cracking jokes in there and Oh, the ruse. Still, you know? Civil War was pretty, was another good one, too. Well, uh, that's what I'm saying is that the most mature one out of phase one to three. That's all I'm saying, Nate. If you all watch. I'm is I, my opinion is phase one through three touched everything in need to. It gave you something for the kids, something for the adults, which is to me what it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. And mm -hmm. that's my views really haven't changed that much on most of those movies. Um, 
just like most of like I'll, I'll even take it to star wars most of my views on those movies have not changed since i've watched them and i mm-hmm. usually watch at least star wars at least once a year like all of them you, you know you know why star wars is is celebrated a lot right it's because star wars even though it was focused towards kids right the toys were focused towards kids the story wasn't the story was not focused towards kids the story was focused towards teens at the time even though george lucas even though george lucas will say it's 100 percent for kids he said it, it says 100 percent for kids because he wants to sell toys but if you look at the underlining story and where does that story came from and the blueprint of that story there's no way that that's for kids you're really telling kids that you can kiss your brother and sister and you know not mind it and that's okay are you really telling them that a guy who is always pursuing uh trying to get laid with some girl that's for kids no oh, man calm down all right we all know that han solo is trying to get laid with leia he wasn't trying to date leia he was trying to get laid with leia all right Let's i just... mean her name is leia so uh the gold the golden bikini that's for kids Come on, Nate. The the whole thing was not for kids. Okay. The whole storyline, the whole thing was not for kids. Well, he, he had to make sure the parents took the kids. But but the toys, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, you know why he has to take the kids, right? Because the, because the toys, man, it's all about the toys. That's always been that's always been the 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 end game. We saw that on the toys we yeah. did us. Yeah. You, you know, George Lucas took a big cut. He, he you Just know, on to the make toys. That, that he knows. toy money. He knows exactly. He knows, man. So it's because Star Wars was never meant for kids. The storyline for Star Wars was never meant for kids. It would never was, man. It was meant for teens and growing adults. That's why it it stood the test of time. All right, let's be real. It was really made to make George Lucas a lot of money. That's what it was really made for. It, It did, yeah, it did. But I'm just saying, it's it stood the test of time because it was made for adults. So by the time that you're actually old enough to actually watch Star Wars, if you were a kid, you just you just see boom, 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 boom. That's all you hear. Uh, That's all you see, and you're like, oh my god, this looks amazing. But you don't understand what the story was. But then when you get older and you start watching Star Wars, you're like, man, this is a this is actually nice written story, man. That's why people, yeah. That's why people were starting liking it, right? So again, it's just one of those things. Like, uh, there's a lot. There's I can go on and on and on and on with it. But like I said before, the only difference is is that we got older and we understood what good movie is and what good written movie is, uh, and shows are. Now that they're following the exact same format since Phase One, it's not working anymore. They need to adapt because the one paying for the subscription services and the one paying for the movies is us. It's the aging millennials, right? The Gen Z people, I don't know, they're still trying to find out. They're mooching off everybody else. They're still mooching off everyone else. They're trying to find a way to actually get free subscription services yeah. from you. How to work without working. How to work Watch a YouTube working. video. So <laughs> <laughs> That's why my pod, if you see my podcast, no one under fucking no no one under uh 25 listens to me. <laughs> Sounds like a like, lot of work to listen to you. <laughs> it's not, I don't want to go. Of, well, here's the thing, it's a lot of work to listen to me because you know, I, I tell you the actual truth, but it makes you think about makes you think about a lot of things, and you're just like, fuck that, man. <laughs> That's not how the way you think. But, anyways, um, but yeah, so we are um i'm going to be uploading the episodes every monday just okay. because the show is on thursday and we're, we don't record until like sunday yeah so uh i'll be uploading episodes until episode six i guess uh on mondays where nate you are going to be uploading them every what friday i'm just gonna keep it on fridays every friday there you go so every friday so um i got nothing else man i think i just said everything i need to say so Essentially, um, make sure you watch uh, Predestination. Predestination. And Predestination. Uh, I don't know where, where you can stream that now, um, but I think you can get it on demand. But as of right now, Netflix. 
bodies, guys. Bodies. Uh, well, you you sold me on that. I gotta watch that now. Bodies, man. It's it's after first episode, Nate. You have to watch episode two. I'm not telling you that you have to watch it. I'm, I'm gonna want to watch it. Is what it you're gonna like. want to watch episode two of it. So uh, after this podcast, watch Bodies on Netflix. It's from DC Comics. Uh, Vertigo, Vertigo, what the best imprint that DC has ever had. And it's by uh, C. Spencer. I'm trying to find C. Spencer. I want to. I want to interview C. Spencer, man. But um, that's if it you, for now. If you see Spencer, get him on your show. <laughs> Jesus, see, e- even your jokes are like mature now. See what I, I'm I saying? Sh- I should be Spider Man. See, see, you see what I'm saying? You just got older. I'm, I'm uh, just saying you haven't seen me and Spider Man in the same place at once, have you? <laughs> Think about that. Sure. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. That is it. Uh, I'm gonna have a um. Not a bombshell announcement, but I'll have a little bit of announcement coming up. New sets, new ideas, new everything. So um, I'll also, uh, me and Nate also talk about doing just reviews. Uh, have you thought about uh, what our show is going to be called? The Review Boys? The <laughs> Review Bros? Boys. I don't know. Um, Review Bros? <laughs> uh, now now you make me have to think. I, I will get back to you on that. Anally Boys? Whoa, no, let's not go there. That's a no well, it's spot. analysis, but you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Think of a name that we just do reviews because, uh, chances are, guys, uh, that's gonna be one of the new shows that I'm gonna be firing up on, um, here on the uh, on the podcast channel. It's just we're gonna be doing reviews. Um, funny enough, it just spot out of like the Star Wars thing, but yeah, we're gonna be doing reviews, me and Nate. So um yeah so a couple of announcements that's going to be coming up pretty soon so uh any last words for everybody nate great white buffalo uh, i don't know what that is uh <laughs> watch hot tub time machine oh hot tub <laughs> jesus um my uh, last words always been the same thing uh, you guys could have been anywhere in the world but you're here with us appreciate that uh have a great night or day or when you guys are listening to this we'll see you next time people